Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope you guys are having an okay uh, day. I can't believe uh, we're still having to deal with this, but I want to address this, especially after a new video has surfaced of an uh, elderly um, black woman on the New York subway being beaten with her own cane by a Hispanic male why everyone stands around and watches and we don't understand the play out and the dynamic and, and, and why that's happening because we are busy justifying other black women being harmed and the simple idea a notion of creating safe spaces for black women is alien and lost on the minds of this internal conflict we have going on within the uh, race where we have this gender war and uh, so much going on. Uh, I made a video about the young black woman in Houston where I'm actually from. I've had the blessing of living in a lot of different places but I've been back here for about eight years now seven eight something like that, eight years um and immediately the reasons why it's okay start coming so the question is when is it okay to hit a black woman in the face with a brick and i'm using that specifically because that's a level of violence and brutality that comes along with that idea um, when is it justifiable is it just and, and, and let me say I'm going to give you my one disclaimer on putting your hands on a black woman if your life or your well-being is in jeopardy you have a right to defend yourself your emotions your feelings your ego your disdain and disgust none of which are justifiable for putting your hands on a black female because what you have to understand is the social impact and I'm going to deal with some other stuff in a second but the social impact of that the play out of that it's bigger than the moment you're looking at the person someone like me is looking at the outreach the play out what what, what does it mean in total See, what happens is when you can sit up and come up with a reason why it's okay to hit a black woman, then that's an arbitrary pass or precedent set that depending on what I deem unacceptable behavior, I can now put my hands on a black woman. And with every person, that, that level or that threshold of justification is going to be different. So you set an absolute Unless she is an immediate threat to you or someone else, she's off limits. Let her say what she's want to say. Let her bump her gums. Let her be whatever she is. And here's the other thing. I see a lot of people using these videos that she does. First and foremost, let me clarify this. I don't I'm not feeling her. I don't like what she does. I, I don't like what she stands for. I don't like any of that. But at the same time, keep your hands off of black women, not just black women who are FBS or uh, foundational black or ADOS. Keep your hands because there's a level at which that cannot be distinguished by others, including our children. Our children are not going well. That was that was a Somalian woman hit. That wasn't an, uh, a, a, a descendant of slaves. That wasn't an African American woman. That was nobody. They're seeing a black woman hit, and when it's a black man hitting, that sets a paradigm on a neurological level of what's acceptable. It's a modeling of behavior. And the thing is, you can't turn it off. A bunch of guys are sitting around with daughters. And you're gonna wanna turn that off when this guy comes up and wants to get at your baby. You're gonna wanna set all these standards, pull your gun out and do a bunch of other boasting and stuff and set all these standards out. And what you don't realize is, if he's not properly socialized, he's gonna sit up and tell you, yes sir, yes sir. But if he is violent, by the time you, you realize he is, your baby's hurt or worse. 
See, I see everybody as somebody's daughter. I see everybody as somebody's child who grew up, regardless of their behavior. There are some black sisters I don't want nowhere near, it. whether they ADOS, African or whatever, I don't want them. And, 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 and they have done less than this person has done. I don't like their attitude. I don't like their energy. But I'm never going to put my hands on them, and I'm never going to lie anybody to put their hands on them while they're around me. Because we as a people will only be respected at the level we're able to provide security and safety for our elderly, our women, and our children. This is historical. This isn't some idea. And for all the cats that love to sit up and throw little, 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 little shots from behind avatars and made-up names, and and you're justifying hitting a woman in you know like you know little little, little stuff like defending a woman is feminine. That's feminine energy. Sitting up and saying, don't hit a woman. I, I didn't say I liked her. I didn't say I'm taking her side on any of the other stuff she did. I'm saying no matter what she's done, if she is not a threat to you or someone else you are supposed to be protecting, she's off limits. There has to be an absolute or everybody will make up their own threshold and there will be constant justification of putting your hands on someone that feel, should feel protected in your presence. Even if you sit up there and say, hey, man, we're not doing that. Then go over and say, hey, look, I ain't really feeling you. I'm protecting you, but you need to get your ass to the house. You need to get away from here. But you don't let anything happen because the level of safety you're able to produce, the environment you're producing is a part of your masculinity. Sitting up and unleashing violence uh, at the slightest provocation isn't masculine. It's a sign of weakness. It's a sign of a lack of self-control, a lack of discipline, a lack of an understanding of what your real role in this community. Yes, you have the unbelievable capacity to be very destructive with your physicality. It's not meant to harm those in the community. It's meant to protect them from the ones outside. And, you know, the cat's taking shots at me like you can see my femininity and you don't know me. You don't know how hard I fought to protect the masculinity of black men. It's constantly under assault, but it ain't under assault by black women as much as you think it is. It's under assault by everything else that puts the black woman in front of you and blames her for it because that's what that's who you see. Oh, sisters, you don't get off easy. You, 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 you don't get off easy. Um. I'm not, not I'm not in the slightest bit finna come with that bull crap about it's your fault because of how you have no I'm not finna do that nobody has a right to put their hands on you you haven't put your hands on them or become a threat to them but you also have to understand that how you handle and treat a man is going to be a determining factor of how he handles and treats you whether he's violent towards you or anything else so we have a problem with how we deal with each other. Violence isn't justifiable in, in this instance, but it needs to be understood. How you talk to me will determine how I deal with you. Me personally, at the level I am, where I've been and where I'm going through, I'm just not going to deal with you. But all these cats, you know, taking these shots, man, the one thing the Internet has done is it cre it's created a bunch of hardcore cowards that hide behind stuff. And said, let me tell you something. The easy thing to do is to pull a trigger. It doesn't take any real courage to do that. A bunch of cowards do it every day. Of all different races, do it every day. What it takes courage to do, what it takes masculinity to do, is to stand up in the face of constant adversity and do what's right. Love your kids, love your family, love your wife, protect it, defend your blackness unapologetically. Be bold in what you do. Speak your truth even when it's unpopular. I've been doing that consistently. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to be real and I'm here to be truthful. And what I'm telling you is historically speaking, you cannot leave your women unprotected and ever be respected by those outside of the community or in. You cannot definitely, you cannot be the cause of harm to your women and be respected especially when you are in a position where you are trying to establish and fight for power that's been kept from you now in many cases are our women been used to emasculate us absolutely talked about it written about it done i mean gone in and out 
Absolutely. Women, you have to, uh, black women, you have to stop being used as an instrument of emasculation and feminization. If I haven't seen anything, and, and the funny thing is some cat took a shot talking about, you know, obviously I was real about a single parent means that he's not heard anything about me or watched any of my things and learned anything about me because the one thing he would know is I was reared in the house with my great grandfather and my great grandmother. I had both people in the house my entire childhood. And I was reared predominantly by the man in the house after age six. All discipline, all correction, all instruction came from him after age six. So I was taught by a man born in 1909 about manhood for all of this crazy emotional bull crap to write. I never heard my grandfather raise his voice. He was the head of the household, unquestioned. Never raised his voice. Didn't try to dominate or control my grandmother. For the most part, she did all the stuff around the house, but when he sit up and spoke, he was heard. And she explained to me why. She says, he's not perfect. He's not perfect. He doesn't always do, uh, he doesn't always make the right system situate make the right choices like anybody else he makes uh, mistakes but whatever goes wrong he finds a way to fix it and she said baby that's all i can ever ask for a man is that if something's wrong he finds a way to fix it and i feel safe in that look it's real simple to me We've got a lot of stuff going on that we cannot stand to have if we're talking about black empowerment. We can't arbitrarily choose who we're going to protect and who we're not based on how we feel. There has to be a universal idea, a universal definition, a universal threshold. What is acceptable? That's why I talked about the black code of conduct now for 20 plus years. That's why I talked about agendas and protocols 20 plus years. Why? Because everybody moving on their own accord, deciding what is, that's, a, that's feelings, that's emotion. That's what keeps us where we are. You have to look at something. You have to sit up and say, okay, this is what's been going on. And this is how long it's been going on. What have we been doing? And you, you're consistently doing the same stuff that kept you there, that got you there. And you want something different. We're going to have to raise the standard of how we move, how we operate, how we move, how, how, how we deal with one another. That's going to have to be a level of appreciation for who we are. Let me explain something to every man. Whether you like it or not, frankly, I really don't care. But I'm going to say it. You can take it however you want to take it. Look, your manhood isn't based on your behavior according to what she does. Your manhood is based on your behavior according to your own character according to your own integrity. I don't treat women a certain way based on who they are. I treat them a certain way based on me. There's a certain way I'm going to move. There's a certain way I'm going to be. In the moment I allow a woman to start dictating how I move, how I feel, and how I behave, I'm already lost. The moment she can get in my head and make me upset enough to step outside of my character, I've lost. I, I, I'm not functioning in my masculinity. I've actually started to behave like a woman. Let me tell you something. Nothing more feminine to me than hitting a woman in the face with a brick. That's something another woman would do. But there's this idea, I need to respond with force or people going to think I'm weak. No, you need to respond with self-control or you'll be another black person taken away from the community and hidden in the system. And the whole idea about where they're from, I'm going to let y'all deal with that crazy stuff like that. Because, yes, we need to deal with home, but you got to see the whole diaspora as the community. J look at the U.S., descendants of slaves, as the family. This is the family. This is who is in our house. So we deal with this first. But when we step outside the door, that's everybody else in our community. It looks like us dealing with different situations similar to what we're dealing with, but different. But everybody's got a target on their back. We're stronger when we're all operating together than we are if it's just the house. But I'm, I'm one of the first to admit that immigrants are often used to attack the position 
uh, of that. So I get it and I understand the frustration. They often have a very condescending attitude towards us. You want to know why? Because they're constantly being pumped an image of us where they come from. Guess who's pumping the image? Guess who's highlighting the behavior of those of them who act negatively towards us? Guess who hides those of them who actually work and want to work with us? Who have an appreciation for our struggle in the same way that they're hoping we have an appreciation for theirs. You're never going to meet them and hear them. They exist. I work with them. The divisiveness is a very powerful tool. J. Edgar Hoover, when asked, the greatest threat to national security said black unity. And the vast majority of the efforts of the uh, 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 of the nefarious instruments of this racial caste system has been aimed at in, uh, ensuring that the black collective remains um, disjointed, disconnected. So. When I look at what's going on, because see, I just somebody just sent me a video and I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched enough of it to sit up and watch. Nobody came to the rescue of this lady. And I'm, I'm assuming that they they felt this young Hispanic male who couldn't have been no more than in his late 20s whooping on this woman that's more than likely in her 60s with a cane, took her cane. And just, I mean. I stopped counting after 20 something licks. He, I mean, she's trying to get away. And so he's just study hitting. She's on the ground. She's not a threat. I don't know what she did, but I know she didn't deserve to be beat like that. Uncontrollable rage is not a sign of strength. Bridled force that knows when to unleash itself and who to unleash itself upon is power, is masculinity. We got 1.3 million black men in prison, a large number of them for violent crimes based on feeling disrespected. Nobody hit them, nobody stole nothing, nobody attacked them, somebody said something. Somebody was in a space they shouldn't have been in, a block they weren't supposed to be on. I was distressed. All of this stuff. She said this. She had the notion to do this. And all this. Let me tell you something. That is not an accident. That is engineered. And they know the behavior they're going to get. You got to come out of the cage. You got to stop acting cage. Cage animals turn on one another. You got to come out of the cage. Again, this isn't a pass to sisters to do anything. This is me saying, black men, let's create an, create an environment and hold ourselves to a standard that as a unified people, we can sit up and say, this is who we are, because I guarantee you, when we create that environment, we change the entire uh, dynamic. Now, for the people who are going up and pulling up this stuff about this black woman, I don't, I don't. I don't really think I need. I, I want to even refer to her as a sister. She's 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 not behaving anywhere like that. And her viewpoints and stuff like that doesn't say she is. So she's a black woman. That's as far as I can go with that. But those who are pulling up these videos, the first thing is that I look at is I see staged. They aren't real. They're staged. Now they're stupid. My opinion. Not something I would want to be associate, not the type of person I would want to be around, not even the person kind of person I would want to hold a conversation with. But she didn't deserve to be hit with a brick. Now, let me try to make it make sense to you. Anytime that a cop or, or any other white person shoots an unarmed black male, a black man or a black young man or a black boy, the first thing that is done is they go up into the archives and they pull out everything that they can find on this person to lure the image and the perception of the public of this person to justify the killing and 
that's no different than sitting up and saying, okay, he hit in the face with a brick, but she this, she that. No, he hit in the face with a brick. It's not even about her. It's about him. What's going on with him that he hit her in the face with the brick? Did she throw the brick at him? Did she have a brick in her hand and coming at him? Now, if you, if you tell me some things where he was literally actually threatened. Now, that's not what I get. What I get is... And, and I, I, I'm not doubting that maybe she said it in a fly way when he asked for her number. Brothers, you can justify it any way you want to. If a woman can trigger you, trigger you with the word no, that's a problem. If a woman can trigger you with the words, I don't want to do this anymore, that's a problem. I get it. Nobody wants to be played. Nobody wants to be hurt. Nobody wants to be mishandled. Don't want, nobody want to feel like they got taken advantage of. But things happen in life and you got to know where you're going to place your energy. You got to know where you want to invest yourself. You got to know what has the capacity to take you away from your family. You got to know what has the capacity to put you in a place where you lose value in your own space. We got to be bigger than what we are. It ain't about her. It's about you. No, the moment that, again, I'm going to say this and then I'm done. The moment that a woman can sit up with her words and take me out of my character. That's a problem with me. That's a problem with me. This isn't saying she has a right to do it. This isn't saying she's okay and it's what she's doing is cool. No, that's a whole nother discussion. What I'm saying is you are not going to pull me out of character. Because me being who I am is too much more important to me and my family. My children are watching. My sons are watching. The people that I work with are watching. Everybody's watching to see if I can hold myself together. Am I, am I who I say I am or can I easily be snatched out of that and something different be revealed? Now, everybody has a threshold, but it can't be words from one of our women. You know, and again, I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to be liked by black women or black men. I'm here to lay down some truths. I'm here to point out to you, we're in last place and we're falling further behind. So something needs to change. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong, but I know what's happening now ain't working. And what's happening now, based on what the years and years of research I've put into the thing, is engineered for us to do and be where we're exactly at right now. And taking pride in it. We get mollywhopped and we taking pride in bashing in and beating in our own women. Coming up with reasons to talk about why it's justified. Warriors wage war against the enemy. And sometimes the enemy is within the camp. But you got to know how to move. This, again, we got to stop being the enemy in the camp. Men and women. We got to stop being the enemy in the camp. We got to realize, and is what I'm doing hurting or helping? It's a simple question, but it's very complex in the nature of the answers that you can discover from that question and the things that you can search out. Look, I'm about to get off here, but I had to address that one last time. Again, personally, I don't like her, but as a black man, Black men need to be protectors. It's your first primitive responsibility. Before being a provider, you become physically capable of protecting. That, 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 that increase in strength and muscle size and muscle mass and that de the voice deepening and, and the increased testosterone and aggression is meant to protect her, not harm her. That's what you're being that's what you're being prepared for in puberty is to move into an adolescent mm -hmm. stage where as an adolescent immature male, you can at least be a protector. And then you develop more maturity, you develop more 
uh, awareness and you start to be able to do the other things that your masculinity demands. Masculinity is so much more than violence. It's so much more than physical aggression. It's so much more than sex. Masculinity is the execution of total manhood in a way that your community is safe and covered. And there is no excuse around it. There's no justification around it. It simply is or it isn't. Start ignoring some of these women with these very volatile behaviors. Start distancing yourself. Start surrounding yourself with people with positive behaviors, male and female. And they'll either get it or they won't. But giving them attention and letting them draw you into something and letting them put you in a situation where we get this isn't helping us. I can tell you now. My grandson runs across that on YouTube while he's while he's I got him on YouTube or or whatever, or one of my older grandchildren check it on uh, Instagram. There and, and and they see what happened. They're not going Somalian and you know and in in Somalian that they're not going. That was an African thing, not an American thing. They just see it and they see black. That's all they see. And, you, and, and that's going to become the standard. And you're wondering what's coming. There's a reason why that, that happens. You've got to be careful of what you're allowing to happen. One of the greatest, one of the greatest victories of white supremacy is the disruption of the family unit the disintegration of the family unit the creation of animosity between black man and black woman the enemy understands the power of that unification and is working over time to ensure that it never comes to fruition our responsibility is to figure a way out how to unify not destroy one another while they still out there doing whatever they want to do. We over here killing each other. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. If you believe in the work that we're doing, look in the description box and show some love for the research center and um, the think tank, uh, the programs like Black Men Lead for the people who sit up and say, I cape for women. For most champion cause in the whole thing is Black Men Lead. Uh, but also, we do a lot of work with our females, with our young girls, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. But we definitely need your support. But again, if you believe in the work we're doing, we're trying to change the narrative. We need your support. On that note, I'm out of here. Uh, look in the description box. The way to give is in there. Uh, on that note, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be free.